tension band wiring of a transverse olecranon fracture. Miller AO classification 21B1. These are the x rays of a 51 year old female who fell, sustaining a transverse fracture of the olecranon. Miller AO classification 21B1. The fracture was treated using the tension band technique. The objectives of this presentation are to understand the biomechanics of tension band wiring, to know the indications for tension band wiring, to be familiar with the instruments and implants needed, and be able to perform the reduction and fixation of the fracture. The tension band principle was first described by Frederick Powells in 1927. He observed that when a curved bone is loaded or a straight bone is eccentrically loaded, one side of the bone will be compressed and the other side distracted. If a device is applied eccentrically to the tension side of the bone, this tension band converts tensile forces into compression forces at the opposite cortex. Here is the tension band principle demonstrated on a simulated olecranon fracture repaired using a figure of eight tension band. Pressure measurements are recorded from the articular surface and the outer cortex. When the elbow is flexed actively using the biceps muscle, the compression force across the articular surface is maintained throughout the range of movement. When the elbow is actively extended using the triceps muscle, between the angles of 60 and 90 degrees, there's an increase in the compression force at the articular surface. The tension band converts the tensile force caused by the active use of the triceps muscle into a compression force at the opposite cortex. Tension band wiring is applied to fractures of the olecranon, the patella, the greater tuberosity of the humerus, and the greater trochanter. The instruments used are from left to right, the large pointed reduction forceps, the sharp hook, the 2 millimeter drill bit, and the 2.0 triple drill guide. Also needed are the small wire cutter, the flat-nosed parallel pliers, the wire bending pliers, the bending iron for K wires, and the hammer. The implants used are a coil of one millimeter diameter circlage wire and two 1.6 millimeter diameter K wires. The patient is positioned supine on the radiolucent table. The extremity is prepared from the axilla to the hand. This preparation allows rotation of the forearm as well as flexion and extension of the elbow during the operative fixation. The bone model has a transverse fracture of the olecranon. Approximately four centimeters distal to the fracture line, a hole is drilled transversely through the ulna with the two millimeter drill bit using a drill guide. The hole is positioned roughly in the center of the bone. The fracture is reduced with the large pointed reduction forceps. The fragment is held in the reduced position using the sharp hook. The forceps is then applied to the reduced fracture, making sure not to block the later insertion site of the K wires. The hook is now removed. A piece of one millimeter circlage wire roughly 50 centimeters long is cut from the coil. A loop is made by hand, approximately one third along the wire. The loop is then twisted with the flat nosed parallel pliers. The shorter end of the circlage wire is introduced from medial to lateral through the hole using the wire bending pliers. On the ulnar side, the wire is bent near the hole so that the prepared loop lies approximately two centimeters proximal to the hole. 
using the triple end of the 2.0 drill guide. The first 1.6 mm K wire is inserted through the point of the electronon, parallel to the shaft of the ulna, and as close as possible to the joint. After the anterior cortex has been perforated, the K wire is retracted approximately one centimeter. Using the wire cutters, the K wire is now trimmed obliquely about one centimeter above the drill guide. The drill guide is removed. The reduction forceps is now removed. The drill guide is put back in place and positioned for the introduction of the second K wire, parallel to the first. After perforating the anterior cortex, this K wire is also retracted one centimeter. The second K wire is also cut obliquely with the wire cutters. The drill guide is removed. The end of the circlage wire that has the loop is wrapped around the two K wires in a figure of eight. In clinical practice, the wire is passed beneath the triceps tendon, just next to the bone. The two ends of the circlage wire are twisted together twice by hand. It is important that the wires be twisted symmetrically around each other and not one wire twisted around the other. Incorrect twisting results in a weakened construct that may fail under load. The ends of the wires are trimmed with the wire cutters. To tighten the wire, the flat-nosed parallel pliers and the wire-bending pliers are used. The wires are pulled and twisted at the same time. To ensure that tension is applied equally, this procedure is repeated alternately on either side of the bone. The wires should be twisted a minimum of four times. The excess wire is trimmed with the wire cutter. Using the wire bending pliers, the wire is bent so that it lies close to the bone. This step is repeated on the other side. With the wire bending iron, the K wire is bent approximately 120 degrees. The K wire is trimmed with the wire cutter. The K wire is then bent further using the wire bending pliers so that the end of the wire can be inserted into the bone. The wire is rotated so that the cut end of the wire is lying on the posterior aspect of the olecranon. Using the bending iron and the hammer, the K wire is impacted into the olecranon. This procedure is repeated for the second K wire. A transverse olecranon fracture has been treated using a figure of eight tension band wire. Tension forces from the pull of the triceps are transformed into compression forces at the fracture site when the triceps is actively used. 